Amen. You guys bless. You ready for more? Uh, I don't know. I haven't done this for a while and please bear with me. I came from work. I work graveyard, so just be with me for the rest. But I promise I'm not going to take that long and then they'll take me in the end. Uh, Brother Jeremiah, can you post uh, Galatians 2? Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. When I walked in this morning, I, I saw like a uh, little few people in here, you know. I said, oh, it's not going to be a challenge. <laughs> and then after the, after the singing, I looked back, oh, a lot of people here, man. <laughs> you guys are kind of a challenge. All right. <clears throat> the word of God says, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, <clears throat> and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live now in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Father God, uh, once again, we... Just want to glorify your name, Lord. We can feel you in this place, Lord, from the very beginning, Father. We, we recognize you in our songs, Lord. We, it's just a wonderful time, Father God, to just praise and worship you, Lord. Lord, give me the anointing that I need, Lord, to speak your word. And give me the wisdom, Lord, to speak it clearly for, for your ears, Father God. And Lord, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for the victory that you're going to do today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Whew, I'm nervous. Ah. Uh, before I went to study, I have a question in my life. Uh, and it became the title of my preaching tonight. I mean, this morning. I did it last night. How do you, our walk in life as a Christian can be really founded in truth or lies? It's a matter of choice, right? Right? No? Right? Right? It's your choice to live for truth or for lies. Right? Nobody can tell you to do so, right? It's your choice, your responsibility, and your own conviction, right? What does it really take for your spiritual Christian maturity to really take place in your life when you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? I have three points. First, you have to deny yourself. You have to deny yourself. Second, let humility take over your pride. Instead of thinking that we are better than everybody else, you are just bitter. You're not. We are all the same. Third, love as Christ loved amen this is where it starts for you to grow we ain't playing no more right so i did this for three years when it comes sunday i wear a cloak i become a christian right that's a christian sunday only and then i'm out of church i take off the cloak I become the world. Right? Is that where your foundation lies? In lies? Or in truth? Right? 
Are we just Sunday worshipers? And then worldly worshipers in every other day of the week. Are we founded in the truth or lies? That's the question I ask myself the most. Right? Most of us have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we are all in the process. Amen? For without Christ, there is no salvation will be known to men. Sin separates gods from mankind. Amen? But God came in the flesh as an offering for the sin of the world. He is the only way. There is no other way. I'm so sorry, guys. If you are looking for salvation to the richness of this world, you are fooling yourselves. If you are looking for salvation for the glory and fame, you are fooling yourselves. Right? Money, fame, blind people, right? Right? We tend to forget about God when we are living fully blessed. Hashtag blessed. Really? Right? But you never think about God when you're in the situation. How you are blessed in the flesh. Right? But in truth, you are not. Right? We tend to seek more of God when the blessings are overflowing. But when it's not, we go somewhere else. Right? There's no other way. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, the light. No one come to the Father except through me. Your money, richness, and fame is just the dirt for God. Because without his son, you are nothing. You amount to nothing. Right? What are we? But have we believed it ourselves and really made Christ as our Lord and Savior? Acts 4 12 says, Salvation is found no one else, for there is no other name heaven given to men by which we must be saved. In Christ alone. Amen. If you have Christ, no matter where your situation in life is, rich, poor, all right, you are blessed. You're already rich. So all those things are just but yet temporary for God. He's looking into your heart, not the things that you have. Or the talents that you can offer to him. Is looking into your heart. Are your foundation in Christ in truth. Or in lies. You can't do it on your own. You can't do it by any type of penitence. By any kind of vows. By any type of religion. By any type of ways or doctrine. You can't. You just can't. Right? Right? Then this takes place. When you, when you make Christ. As your Lord and Savior. You start denying yourself. Right? Surrendering your will and future to God. Psalms 27.1 The Lord is my light. And my salvation. But for us Christians, this is the most crucial part when we deny ourselves. Right? It's the hardest thing to do. 
it's easy like to be get convicted and then start offering your life to Christ. Right? And then ask Him to become your Lord and Savior. Now you're saved. But you're still looking for your own desires, not desires of God. Right? We've gone through the process of turning away, turning away from our old ways. For some, it is hard. For some, it is easy with the strength of God. But our dreams, our plans, our future are still based on our own desires. The things that we want, the things that we gain, and the things that we want to achieve in life. Right? You are driven by those. Tell me I'm lying. See everybody quiet? We are driven by those. There was a point in my life that I want to compete with everybody so I could gain more, more and more. So I could have more money for myself and I could buy the things that I want in life. Nice watch, nice car, nice clothes. Go to the places that I could afford to go to. Right? Those are the things that drives me. Right? Those are the things that drives me. I don't know about y'all, but that's me. Right? You know that our desires consumes us. And you know that's right. Right? Your desires to look at porn when nobody's looking. Your desires to do drugs when you want to get high. Your desire to smoke a reefer or a joint or a blunt so you want to be out of this place. That's desires. Right? You just don't go out buying those kind of things and light them up if you don't desire it. Right? You don't turn on your computer and watch porn or your cell phone if you don't desire it, that's your heart founded in lies. It's not the truth, man. You think for a little sum sum you could get away with it? Still a sin. Right? I thought you were forgiven. Why well, keep doing those? Right? It's hard to deny ourselves. Right? We are driven what by what? I want to graduate. I want to be a master of something. I want to be a chef. I want to be a doctor. For what? For something to brag about? Right? God's, God gives you a blessing for you to use it, not for your own good. For the good of others. But we simply can't deny ourselves. We were born selfish. I know I am. I still don't know what I'm doing here up in the stage. Right? Because if I can't live 100% for God, what am I doing here? Right? So I want my foundation to be founded in the truth. Right? Not lies anymore. It is hard for us to live under God's will. Somehow, we, st we still rely on our intellect, minds, strength, capabilities, so we can have a good life. We are still blinded by the pleasures of this world and the treasures of this world. We only turn to God when we want more or we're lacking something. We can never have enough of the treasures of this world. Why? Because it can never really satisfy you. No one can. No one can. Only Christ can. Right? See, I was blinded by me. 
you know, I, I said, I want to be in the background for a while before I, I do worship leading, so active in church, everything. But I'm gaining this problem that I'm doing it for me. You know, I'm too focused on me. And then I went in the background so I won't be focused on me. But I kept focusing on me more instead. Right? If I give my life to Christ, I should go all the way, right? It's hard, man. It's hard for me. You know, I was praying about this preaching. How can it impact other people's life? And then when I was done with it, I start crying. Because it impacted my life. Because I was founded in lies. Right? I play church, you know. And I know most of you, y'all, do the same thing, man. You can't lie to God. Right? You can only lie to yourself. Ain't, ain't that dumb. Right? You have one but audience. Right? If he is your Lord and Savior, neglect that desires that lust. Neglect that desires of getting high. Neglect that desires in turning into a greedy person. Why? Because it's not the desires of God. That's just the desires of you. Right? Denying yourself had to take place. Right? Some is after God's generosity. Some is after God after God's glory. When we all should aim for God's heart. Right? It's what we're supposed to be living for. Most of the time when I stand up here, everybody just turn quiet. I don't know if I'm hurting you or I'm an eyesore or I'm just Speaking the truth plainly. Right? You know? Is it hard to just simply hear the truth? And it hurts you? It has to convict you, right? Because if it's not going inside your heart, there's no point for this. Right? We play along. When others are motivated, we're motivated for God. When everybody else start dying, everybody else start dying. <laughs> are you serious? Right? We grow and then we stop. Right? We can't grow and grow and grow. Although we have enough, we want more of God, right? Right? So we aim for that. Start denying your desires. Let it be a second to God. Meaning, yourself will just be second to God. At first, I thought I was aiming for good things when I have a better life. Yeah, I'm aiming for good things. For a better me. Right? But we're not really aiming for the good things for others. Right? We're simply just blessed on our own. What kind of church are we? Right? Aren't we supposed to be blessed? Everybody else? Right? You feel the burden of each other and you feel the needs of each other. And if you have the capability to help out, Feel free to do so. That's denying yourself. Right? Instead, more for you, just, just give it to others. Right? I have learned those kind of things. Before, it's hard to just give, give, give. Then all of a sudden, when, when my wife say, if we're doing it for God, we're doing it for God, and then we never go broke. It's crazy. I don't earn that much. But we never go broke. Sometimes we have more. Right? 
Although we're not living in seven oaks, we're still blessed. Right? Although we're living in the east side community of Bakersfield, if you have Christ, you're rich. I don't care what everybody else, you are rich. Right? That's what you need to do. Just deny yourself first. Then let humility take over your pride. Right? Everything I do, I think I could figure it out myself. It's crazy. I thought I could do everything on my own. I thought I was smart enough. That I don't have to rely upon God for anything. It's crazy. We should aim for God's heart, not only for blessings, because it will come automatically. The reward will come. Don't worry about it. Right? We should turn to God for more richness in spirituality than the flesh. Right? That good clothes is a matter of the flesh. Driving a good fancy car. It's a matter of the flesh, right? But instead of going out to your jobs, praying for your co-workers, praying for your classmates at school, or for the people in the streets, it's not richness. It's not a matter of the flesh. It's a matter of your spirit. Are you still thinking about yourself or for others? Aren't we supposed to be compassionate for the people outside church? Not the only ones that are already inside church. Right? Because we see each other every day, most of the time. But we have been blessed. We got new faces. Right? For the people who is aiming for the matter of the spiritual things. Right, God said, as long as there is one faithful, right? Right? Yes. He will not devour Sodom and Gomorrah. Nobody was faithful. So I think we're not being devoured because there's people that are faithful in this church. Right? Are you part of it? Are we part of it? Are we? Right? That's pride. Right? You know, I can figure it out myself. They can do their own thing. They can pray for people in the streets. I stay here in church, sing and dance, preach. Right? But we never preach to the Gospels. We never preach the Gospels to the people outside this church. Mainly, for our own living, right? Sometimes we do the same things the people outside the church do when you're with them, right? Are we becoming a blessing or are we an encourager of faith or an encourager, encourager of the ways of the world? How can we define ourselves different from others, we keep doing the things that they're doing so. Right? Everybody aiming for richness, I can tell you that. Everybody aiming for fame, most of us. Everybody aiming for glory. Right? You want all of that? It'll come automatically. Right? Because God sees the desires of your heart. Right? You know? God said, if you just follow him, he will give you the desires of your heart according to his will. But we keep pushing for the things that we want for our own will. Right? You, you describe... Richness the same as everybody else. If you have more money, fancy cars. 
right? But if you have a little less and it's enough to survive on a daily basis, you think you're not rich and it's not a blessing. We compare our lives to other people. How come they're blessed? Don't we go to the same church? How come we're not? Right? Within, how come we could do all those things in front? How come I can't? Who said you can't? Right? That's you stopping you. Right? That's only you stopping you. It's a matter of choice. Right? Deny it, let go, and then move fully in the hands of God. Right? And then blessings after blessings, joy after joy is unending. Right? But we can't. Can't. Right? That's the hardest part. We have to deny ourselves. We have to swallow our pride and then fall down to God in all humility. Ask God as your Lord and Savior and start living for God. Not for yourselves. You know, I, I wanted to call off, man. I wanted to go to San Diego, man, you know. It's hard to be, for me to be alone now. Ever since I got married, like, Eric is just right there. Eric, this is this, this the week that's been the longest that I've been, been with my wife. You know, so I don't know what to do. I, I didn't even have the confidence to get out of the house and go to church by myself. You know? But I had to preach, man. <laughs> so I said, all right, let's just go. Let's do this. I don't know how to handle myself. Sometimes when I'm preaching, I'm, I'm just looking at my wife. But she's not here. So it's hard for me to do this. Now I have to deny myself. <laughs> right? have to just be here and follow the will of God. You know, it's hard sometimes for us to sacrifice the things that we want the most. I want to have fun in San Diego. I had a plan that when we go to San Diego, I'll try the slingshot. But then, wink, 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 I have to stay. <laughs> but I was blessed this week we went to Six Flags. Wow. Right? It's crazy too. <laughs> right? The, see, it's a matter of choice, right? Either you want to take the commitment of going through an extreme ride or not, right? It's you. And then for the satisfaction of somebody, and then you say, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how you guys do this, right? Then we just say, Simply right. Right? But everybody else have different convictions. Okay? Do you get me? Do you get me? <laughs> right? Not everybody else have a calling to stand here and doesn't have a stage fright. Right? You can serve God in your own conviction. Do you get what I'm saying? You don't have to be here. Right? And then I'm full on for God. Nah, there's different type of ministries in the church. We could all be long inside a family of God. Right? Maybe singing is not for you. Right? Maybe you could play a guitar, you just don't know it yet. Right? You know? Maybe preaching is not for you. Right? But you could be an encouraging person inside, in front of that door. Ushering people in. And with that smile, you encourage them to be inside a church and feel the love of God. Amen. You know, it doesn't have this. We don't have the same things, right? If we all preach, man, we'll never run out of preachers. You Sunday, you Sunday, you Sunday, you, sun, you Sunday, right? Who sings? Right? You Sunday, you There's a lot of things in the body of Christ. Right? You don't, maybe you're a prayer warrior, you just don't know it yet. So you haven't denied yourself yet. Right? You haven't fully embraced the will of God for you. 
right? You know, what's holding me back? I can't, yeah, you can't do it unless you say I can, right? You know, you can't deny yourself unless you say you can. It's a matter of choice, right? It's your foundation in the truth or lies, right? Don't worry, guys. We will have the strength to resist the pleasures of this world and treasures of this world. We have to deny ourselves for our spiritual growth to really take place. Let us be consumed by it, not to be worried and not to be proud. Take the will of God fully in your life. Right? Surrender everything. Lord, this is me now. I don't know what you have for me. I don't know if I could be a preacher. I don't know if I could sing for God. I don't know if I could play for God. I don't know if I could teach for God. But use me as a willing vessel. Right? This is all you now. Forget about me. Let's see what God, where God takes you. Let's see. And I promise you, it's an ending. Blessings and joy. Blessings and joy. Even on sufferings, you can experience joy with God. Haven't we heard it on the last preachings? Right? But we, we still rely on the things that we can do and just give ourselves to God. You know, I'm, before I'm more focused on the job, 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 job. Now I'm not focused on the job. I'm not focused on God either. I'm just focused on me. And then I kept reading this, reading this, reading this, reading this. Should I preach this? Why? So after this, people will just look at me. He was the one preaching, right? Right? You know? Well, I stand now in confidence, right? That I want to be for God, not for lies. I don't know about you, but for me, this is me now. I love preaching. Before I had a stage fright, I, I can't speak in front of people. And all of a sudden, I go to God, closer to God, closer to God. Gave out the things that I love the most in the world. I love weed, man. What's up with it? I love it. I think I've tried every weed that they sell in the shop. Right? But nothing satisfies me like Christ does. I'm in a never type of high with God. You know? You smoke all your weed you want. I already did. Wax, joint, bong. What? What else? Hemp, hashish. All of them, man. It never satisfies me like Christ does. You know? I've tried everything, man. Most of the people here know me before. That's why the people before that that's here, before in this church, they're no longer here. <laughs> Maybe they were surprised. What? Is in there? Man, I've seen him drink, passed out, smoked out, do all kinds of things. Now he's preaching. Who are you kidding, you know? And it intimidates me, right? But who cares, right? If this is God's will, this is God's will. Can't do anything about it anymore. You know, you can drink all the liquor you want. I'm telling you, nothing can satisfy you as Christ does. When you believe it the most and start surrendering your life to Christ, and then eating that pride and turn it to humility that your life is fully dependent on God, then 
you start loving like Christ. Right? Because you can never really love others the way Christ did if you never really fell in love with Him. Right? We could be convicted and be saved. You can have an encounter with God, but if you never fall in love with God, it's nothing. You are just driven by convictions and encounter. What? Well, there's none of those. Right? But there's none of those. You're not going to fall in love with God? Man, your sin caused the grip. You know? But Jesus paid the bill. Right? You can't pay it yourself. Just a reminder. You think you could do it on your own? No, I tried. You know? I played church, I tried. You know what's crazy? I was playing church, but I'm still getting the blessing. Right? But it never satisfies me. I want more. Right? I stop playing church. I get the blessing. All of a sudden, I think I have more. Now, what should I do with it? Right? You know? But it's still the same money. Right? Because it your desires, your ways start changing. Right? If you desire to look upon more for God, your ways and understanding about the things that you have in life start changing. And your life changes. Right? But if not, I don't know where we we could go. You have to change your desires for God, not your desires. Then you start growing, right? Because you're already in love with Christ. And then the people that you see here outside, you see them as loved by Christ as well, right? So the things that they need or, or the things that they want that you can help them with, why not share? Right? Don't keep it all for yourselves. Yeah, it's a blessing, but if you keep it all for yourself, it turns to a sin. Do you get what I'm saying? Right? It's okay to be blessed, but be a blesser as well. You know? See your desires changes through time. Keep falling in love with God. Keep falling in love with God. And keep falling in love with God. Right? And never doubt. Stay faithful. No matter what the circumstances is, you stay faithful with God. No matter what the trials and the tests or the things that you like in life, just stay faithful. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. If you can't hold on anymore, ask God for strength. Right? That's the only way. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Stop worrying about for the matters of the flesh. You know, I'm not saying stop working and then be 24-7 with God. And then you don't eat. You can't feed your family. That's not right anymore. But what you're doing is, you're doing everything for God now. Now I go to work for God so I can bless the people there. Right? I go home, share the blessings to my family. Right? So I could share God with them. I could share love with them. You know? I go to school. I start worrying about my seatmate. Right? If he knows Christ. If not, I could share it to him. By the way I walk, by the way I speak, by the way I present myself as a living sacrifice for God. Right? You be a blesser in everything that you do. Take the situation, you know, and use it for the glory of God. Right? As we are, we are called for that. To grow and grow and grow 
and grow for Christ. You know? Till we meet Him in the end. Right? Never doubt. Right? Because we always tend to rely on ourselves. It says, 1 Corinthians 3.19 says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taken the wise in their own craftiness. If you start just relying on the things that you do, keep doubting God, you are fooling yourself. You get what I'm saying? Fully trust. Fully trust. Right? Being blessed, being saved, being a servant of God doesn't give you the right to look down on others as well. Being wise in your own understanding doesn't give you the right to be judgmental towards others. Your achievements, your education, your richness doesn't give you the right to be superiors towards others. For all, all equal in the eyes of God. If you have been saved and start serving the Lord, do not think that you are God's gift to mankind. No, you're not. It's only Christ. Right? Had that convict you in the heart that everything that you do in the flesh is for God, not for yourself. We, we don't take our pride once we get the things that we want from God. We stay humble and st still serve others right there is no higher level in christianity do not compare yourself walk into others it develops insecurities you have your own walk with god do you get me you have your own walk with god don't worry about other people's life worry about you right let humility take over before pride. Because God said, love, right? And it says, 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, it's kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it's not proud or rude, or it, it is not self-seeking, right? If you have any other definition of love than that, you're in the wrong situation right love as christ love even when it hurts still love right that's the only way that we can grow right we deny ourselves we think we turn our own desires to god right we seek god first than anything else deny our pride as well embrace humility and love as Christ loves. Right? Is it so hard? Is it so hard? Is it? God loves you first. Remember that. First Corinthians 13, 2. And though I had the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I, have, I am nothing. Love conquers everything. For by love, we are saved. Love simply because God is love. Right? Love simply because God loves you. Do you love God? Right? This is the moment for us, you know, to embrace it fully and start denying ourselves and the things that we want in this life. For that love to consume you, right? Let's just be consumed by it. I don't know where it will take us, but I know this church will grow. Not only in quantity but in quality as well and we start blessing the people around us right but first we seek God's will we seek God's will 
Father God, once again, we thank you for all the things that you have done in our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have reminded us, Father, that it's just all about you. Lord, we thank you for this church, Father God. We thank you for this people, Father God. Please touch their hearts, Lord. Please start, touch their spiritual minds, Father God, to transform it, Father God. Transform it in your ways, Lord. We desire you. We want to desire you. We want to desire you more and more, Father. And we thank you, Lord, that we know that we are safe with you. We thank you for everything you've done in our lives, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen.